Um, he got out and hiked the Appalachian Trail, lived in a primitive li living community in the mountains of Western North Carolina, and when he came home, he enrolled in community college before graduating from Susquehanna University in 2015. So, Chris, that's all yours. Thank you guys for coming out tonight. Um, I'm actually going to be reading a short fiction piece um, called The Cat in the Road. When he went out to smoke, he noticed the dead cat in the road. He could see the blood in front of its head from the reflection of the porch light across the street. Headlights lit up the street as the car got closer, and he saw the white and brown hair in the face of the cat, and his heart sank. He threw the lit cigarette into the street and stepped into the house. She was sitting on the couch, and she looked at him like she had so many other nights, and he knew what was coming. It would be one of those talks where she would try to fix him or make him see something he wasn't ready to see. He sat on the other end of the couch and looked down at the table where his foil ball was laying and the needle in the tube that he used to wrap around his arm. Just looking at it made him itch. He looked away. He looked at Kelly and saw her look down at the table, at his things, and then back at him. Look at you, she said, and then she said, look at, it, look at this shit lying all around. And he said, not now, Kelly, and she said, then when, Greg? And he said nothing, and she said everything she needed to. He focused on the cat's bed in the corner with its dome-like top and the opening that Max hadn't fit in since he was a kitten. The SPCA gave it to him when he adopted Max, along with some food to get him started, and a cat toy of Max's choice, a tiny sock filled with catnip, which Greg found all over the house, on the couch, under the thick blanket of his bed, one time on top of the dryer. He would go days without seeing the sock, and then Max would bring it back. It was battered now, this fabric stretched out and the edges frayed from all the hopped up catnip attacks and from Greg stepping on it, but it was still his favorite, and Greg loved the days when Max couldn't see him watching it watching as he carried it to a new hiding place, somewhere behind the couch or in the bed, and looked before placing it there the way cats do. Are you listening to me, she said. Are you hearing any of this, Greg? And he said, yeah. He remembered how Max used to jump up on the couch as he would start to slip away and curl up next to him, turning and turning and kneading, until he finally plopped down, purring against Greg's thigh. He told Max he loved him, told him about his days, told him the things he didn't want to tell anyone, tell Kelly, the things he didn't want to tell himself, and Max would stay, purring on. She was shaking him now. Are you still out of it, she said, and he said, no, why are you shaking me? And she said, because you weren't saying anything. Do we need to go to the hospital again, she said, and he said, no. Max would click his fangs, banging his tail against the window as he watched the birds at the feeder on the sill. He would take any chance he could get to sneak out when the door was opened. Greg knew this, and he made sure when Kelly started coming over that she knew this, and she learned quickly to keep her foot ready to push him back when she opened the door. Greg remembered picking him up on nice days and walking out back, holding him close, his back claws digging into the skin of his stomach, and watching how big his eyes got and how his ears twitched at the birds. Greg had never noticed how many birds there were out there. <clears throat> She was yelling now as she picked up the foil wrapper and needle and tie and threw them in the trash. She said, you don't need this shit, Greg, and he shook his head and said, you don't understand, Kelly, and she said, you're not even listening. I can't do this anymore, and he said, okay, and he wanted to beg her to stay, but how could he? She said, I'm serious this time, Greg. She said, I'm done, and he said, okay, I understand, and he didn't stop her when she put her coat on and walked to the door, putting her foot out for Max, and then slamming it behind her. She was gone, and he was alone in the living room, and he tried to think of the last time he'd seen Max. Was it this morning when he fed him? Had he seen him at all that afternoon? Had he been so high that he couldn't remember whether he saw him or if he jumped up like he normally did when Greg got comfortable on the couch after tying off? Did he sneak out when he went out to smoke a cigarette before Kelly got home from work around four? Had it been that long? He knew it was Max in the street. He had, it as, he had known it as soon as he saw the outline of the cat in the road. He picked up his phone and sent a text to his guy, Mark, and then Mark was there, and he had some stuff, and Greg was alone again. He couldn't help himself when he held the lighter under the spoon, couldn't help it when he sucked it into the needle and flicked it with his index finger. He couldn't help himself, 
and then the pinch and the sting and the rush. He thought about Max, thought about the cat bed that Max hadn't been able to fit into, thought about the catnip sock and how the thumping outside against the window to get those birds. He thought of Max next to him on the couch purring, vibrating against his legs as it went numb, always there. And he turned his phone off and put his head into his hands and the thumping, the thumping, the thumping. Thank you.